I think I had just got a cajon from Guitar Center in Lexington because I saw one on a YouTube video. But yeah, is that like relatively a new instrument? Yeah, I mean, this was 2009, I guess. Go look it up. Uh, I mean, but it's a it's Peruvian, its origin. So I mean, it it was a it's it's kind of been an instrument. I guess it's just been modernized now through uh, drum companies, you know. Yeah, but this. So you didn't see, I'll tell you this, you didn't see them in every bar like you do now. Yeah, they actually, uh, from what Google says, the story goes that Spanish flamenco guitarist Paco de Luca and Brazilian percussionist Ruben Dantes discovered the Cajun drum while on tour in Peru in the 1970s. Yeah, so it's per, it's Peruvian. Yeah, so I, I guess before the 1970s, like that's the only country that even had one. Well... <clears throat> it came from West Africa. Um, There's a group of people that were brought down there in South America, mainly Peru, namely Peru. And were enslaved. And their greatest power was their ability to make music. Mm-hmm to make noise and play the drums, play, you know, African drums. And they didn't allow them to have any of that there. So they were suppressed and oppressed and depressed, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, what the people there didn't realize is that they'll find a way to make music. So oftentimes they'd carry fruit baskets you know, to transport goods and services. Yeah. And various times of the day, if, if they had a break or whatever, they'd turn that basket down and sit on the ground. They'd sit on it and just play rhythms on it mm. and make noise. And almost like these drum circles would just break out. And that was how they were able to have a voice. And, That's and express themselves and, and, you know, be thankful for the life they had, even though they were enslaved. That was their music, was their ability to, like, feel that joy. Yeah. And then it just grew from that. To my understanding, I've done, I've looked into it often. Um, and like you said, I, that's a good link right there that they discovered it down there while they were on tour because yeah. I bet they saw a local do it. Probably, yeah. And they were like, <laughs> and then, you know, now you can buy them, you can buy them at Mount Music Exchange. It's crazy how powerful music can be that even though that they were going through all that at the time, they, you know, that little light bulb went off in somebody's head to turn a basket and to a drum. Music is such a, it's almost become this natural human instinct. Like, uh, <clears throat> I was talking with uh, Harry Clark of the mm -hmm. Wooks a few weeks ago, and we got into this discussion about, like, can music be genetic? Like, if you see a little nine-month-year-old baby mm -hmm. and do doesn't know what sound is, doesn't know what music is, don't doesn't know any of that, don't even know what words are, yeah. but yet... If you turn on the right song, hmm. it'll start bouncing. Yeah. It'll it'll clap its hands. Yeah. It's almost like music is in our DNA. It yeah. is this driving force of human nature. Yeah. It's spirit. And man, that that's a beautiful story right there yeah. about you know how how that was even discovered, how that was invented. Mm -hmm. People will find a way to groove, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and eating and grooving. That's that's the two things that drive humans. Soul food, buddy. Yeah, man. You know, the groove, rhythm of life. 